One of the first things you'll do as an experienced ECG practitioner is check if the patient's rhythm is normal. In other words, you'll ask yourself whether the patient is in sinus rhythm. So sinus rhythm or no sinus rhythm, that's the question. And if it is in sinus rhythm, what is it? A couple of rhythms are so strikingly different from sinus rhythm that you'll recognize them from a distance. In this course, we'll call these rhythms rhythms at a glance. Why is it so important to recognize these types of rhythms? Well, because some of them are so genuinely life-threatening, you'll have to act within seconds once you see them. So pay attention and go through all the exercises. But now let's start with our first rhythm at a glance. Here you can see bizarre-shaped and irregular spikes up to 1 millivolt in amplitude. You should try to memorize this characteristic tracing and be able to recognize it immediately. It's a case of ventricular fibrillation. In this instance, the ventricles don't contract properly, and the patient is in circulatory arrest. Without proper resuscitation and defibrillation, this patient will die. So always remember ventricular fibrillation, which is a truly dangerous and life-threatening entity. Let's move on. Here's another case of a rhythm at a glance. Here you can see broad and fairly regular waves, similar to the teeth of a comb. The high amplitude of the individual complexes shows us that they must arise from the big muscular mass of the ventricles. This patient has a heart rate of around 300 per minute, or maybe a bit less. Depolarization and repolarization cannot be discriminated anymore in this particular instance. This is a special form of ventricular tachycardia, also called ventricular flutter. Here's another rhythm at a glance. In this example, QRS complexes appear fairly irregularly with the heart rate of around 105 per minute. Over here, the distance between individual QRS complexes is fairly constant, so they're regular. But then there's a long pause or a long distance between the two QRS complexes, which makes the whole tracing look a bit irregular. In between the QRS complexes, we can see waveforms which are fairly typical of this rhythm. These waves have a sawtooth morphology and are called flutter waves. They're very characteristic of atrial flutter. Their amplitudes are much smaller than in ventricular flutter because they arise from the thin atrial myocardium. They're typically only seen in leads 2, 3, and AVF. So if you look at lead 1, you'll not be able to diagnose atrial flutter. In atrial flutter, there's a self-perpetuating loop or circus movement that goes on in the atria. For each loop, there's an impulse that propagates through the atria, and for each loop, one atrial flutter wave is recorded. These loops, or flutter waves, have a rate of 200 to 400 per minute. Fortunately, not every one of these impulses is conducted down to the ventricles, which would be very uncomfortable for the patient. As we know, impulses from the atria are conducted down to the ventricles through the right AV node, which is located around here. Thanks to the refractory period of the AV node, it acts as a filter. So usually only every second, third, or fourth beat is conducted to the ventricles. In this case, we have one, two, three, four flutter waves per QRS complex. So this is a four to one block. Let's check out atrial flutter in action. So the self-perpetuating loop starts in the atria, and for each loop, one flutter wave is recorded. First flutter wave, second flutter wave, third flutter wave, then the fourth comes, which is then conducted down to the ventricles when we see a QRS complex. Once that's done, the whole cycle starts over again. This is another typical rhythm at a glance. What strikes us in this example are the vertical spikes preceding the broad QRS complexes. This kind of depolarization does not occur naturally. These spikes are produced by the electrodes of an artificial pacemaker located in the right ventricle. You can see it here. So the entire heart has to be depolarized by an impulse that comes from the right heart. And that's also why the QRS complexes are broadened. 
because this type of depolarization takes longer than normal, just like in left bundle branch block. There are different types of pacemakers. The one we have here is a so-called VVI. You'll hear more about pacemakers in a later chapter. So congratulations, by now you can already identify these disorders. Ventricular fibrillation, ventricular flutter, atrial flutter, an artificial pacemaker, and of course, sinus rhythm. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.